war in which we're now engaged is not, cannot be, a war between America's two great political parties. As I've often said in the past, certainly the millions of loyal Americans have long voted the Democrat ticket. Love America just as much. They hate communism just as much as the average Republican. I'm not going to discuss politics tonight. I am going to discuss this war in which we've been engaged for 105 years. A war declared by Karl Marx in 1848, redeclared and brought down to date by Lenin, again redeclared by Stalin, and again redeclared by the Kremlin within the last five or six weeks. Keep in mind also, my good friends, that as of tonight, we are not winning this war. Keep in mind that 106 years ago, when this war was declared, you could number the active communists on the fingers of both your hands. 97 years later, in 1945, you couldn't number them on the fingers of both your hands. The number then was 180 million human souls. As of tonight, the 17th day of March, 1954, just eight years later, the figure is not 180 million. As of tonight, the figure is 800 million people. 800 million people in communist slavery. My good friends, no brutalitarian force has ever achieved that success before in the history of this world. Christianity in 2,000 years has not been that successful. So let's keep in mind, my good friends, that this is something not far from you, the people in this audience here tonight. Now, let's get down, if we may, to what we're doing about it today. As you know, some of us in Washington who have been sent down there, men like that grand old man of the Senate, the great Democrat Pat McCarran, men like Bill Jenner and others have been trying to slowly dig out, expose to the public view those who would destroy this nation. Now you will see, you are seeing today, an all-out attempt to marshal the forces of the opposition, using not merely the communists, but the fellow travelers, the deluded liberals, the eggheads, and some of my good friends in both the Democrat and Republican Party, who can become heroes overnight in the eyes of the left-wing press if they will join in the, join with the jackal pack. What you will find is the all-out attempt to try and curb the powers of the investigating committee. Change the rules, if you please. Make it tougher to investigate communists than it is to expose crooks and dishonesty. When you hear, when you hear this clamor as you're hearing it today, ask yourself this question. Why, why should it be more difficult? Why should it be made more difficult? Why should the rules be different? in exposing treason, in exposing truckers. I would like to tonight, if you don't mind, I would like to give you the names of some of the individuals who have appeared before our one-man committee. And keep in mind, when you talk about a one-man committee, as far as my committee is concerned, we have never, we have never held a single hearing which was objected to by a single senator on the committee. I would like to just pick at random the names of 20, if I may. Let me tell you what happened to those 20. All of them, the time they appeared before our committee, the time they were subpoenaed, let me say, the time they were ordered to appear, they were either working for the government or they were working in defense plants which were handling secret and top secret work. All of them, after they appeared before the committee, were either fired or suspended. Let's run through the names. W. Powell, Robert Goodwin, Edward Rothschild, Nathaniel Mills, 
Henry Archdeacon, Donald Morrill, Whittelodge, Pers Pierre Kersky, R. Levine, Alexander Gregory, Theodore Pappas, Victor Bowles, Irving Perez, that name I imagine is familiar, Sidney Friedlander, Robert Northrup, Arthur Owens, Joseph Gebhardt, Emmanuel Fernandez, Gordon Belgrave, Dewey Bashir, Leo Kantrowitz. I just picked those at random, my good friends, to give you an idea of the some of the people who would still be in government tonight or in defense plans if the left-wingers had their way that they could not have been dug out before the so-called one-man committee. I would like to read to you very briefly from a document, and you try and guess what this is as I read from it, will you? You, you try and guess what this is reading from. Uh, page 15. So we must, we must take part in any fights between Eisenhower and McCarthy. I'm not quoting this verbatim, I'm paraphrasing it, it's too long to read. We have been derelict in our duty in not having taken part in those fights. Now I quote verbatim. Uh, we must direct the sharpest fire on any given issue against McCarthy, but we must be careful not to appear to support Eisenhower either. In other words, you get the idea? We must enter the fight. We must damn hell out of McCarthy, but be careful don't praise Ike. In other words, they don't like Ike either. Then, then they define the, the method, the method of the fight against the committees digging out communists. They say, refer to it as a struggle against witch hunting investigations of the McCarthy McCarran type of congressional committee. Defend the victims of McCarthyism. Then, in addition, there is the important direct attack upon McCarthy himself. And then they give the three aims the three aims, one of the three aims, let me quote. To elect an anti-McCarthy Congress by defeating every McCarthy McCarranite candidate, especially singling out for defeat those who are incumbents, and by electing a powerful block of conscious and determined fighters against McCarthyism. See, they're very nonpartisan. They say defeat the McCarran type of Democrat, the McCarthy type of Republican. Who do you think has said this? September 1953, the main report delivered at the National Conference of the Communist Party of the United States of America. That's the party line. Who set this party line? According to this communist booklet, it's Mr. Andrew Stevens. Well, I, I would like to tell you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that there is no Andrew Stevens. There is no Andrew Stevens. And I would like to challenge that communist party which sets down the line to be followed by all communists throughout the United States. I would like to challenge them to tell us who this secret communist is, who is so high in the party that he can set the line for the National Conference of the Communist Party, 1953. Of course, they won't do that. I might say the American people would be very, very much surprised, I'm sure, if you knew the identity of Andrew Stevens. There's only one communist party. The communist party that puts out this pamphlet setting the line for the communists in the United States is the same communist party as the one that tells Fifth Amendment communists how they should testify. It's the same communist party, if you please, that ordered American boys to have their hands wired behind their backs and their brains blown out with communist machine guns. It's one and the same party, my good friends. Now there are those who say, well, it's all right to dig them out, but oh, we don't like your methods. Well, my good friends, up to this date, up to this very moment, none of those who have said they don't like the methods have told us any other method they could use that would be effective. And when you hear them crying that they don't like the methods, I suggest that you ask them when and where they ever exposed the communists by their methods. They say, when they say, you don't treat them like gentlemen, I'd like to ask them to take the 20, the 20 whom I've named to you. You say, don't give us general statements, my good friend. You say, pick out one of those cases and tell us where we ever mistreated any of those innocent communists. 
not so easy to make those general statements. And when they say you don't treat them like gentlemen, while we do, I might say that if we, if we did not, I would not cry for them. Treasurers are not gentlemen, my good friends. They don't understand being treated like gentlemen. May I say to you, my good friends, tonight, to the American people, that I don't care. I don't give a tinker's damn <laughs> how high or how low, how high or how low, people in either the Republican or Democrat party, either party, are unhappy about our methods. This fight is going to go on as long as I am in the United States. Sir. I've often been asked by some of my friends why why I continue this contest when at times the odds seem very high against you. About 20 years ago, well, it's more than that, 25 years ago, I was a chicken farmer back in Wisconsin. Since then, I have been given, I think, the highest honor that the people of a nation can give any man, namely, the job of representing them in the United States Senate. This nation, this country has been very good to me. I am extremely lucky also in that I have a wife who is interested in this fight and is willing to take all the abuse also. And I may say that the only way that I can repay my nation, the only way that I can keep faith with the people who have given me that high honor of manning the watchtowers of this nation is to continue this fight, regardless of how deep the scars may be, regardless of how rough the fight may get. I know, I know that you, the members of the Irish Fellowship Club of Chicago, will believe me when I tell you that this fight is not going to stop. <laughs>